So, so the example that was given to me once was that on top of this flagpole was a ball, steel ball. And so the CO passed by and said, uh, when I pass by here tomorrow, I want that ball shining. So that's how it went down. Now look, Bro Watson, it was way up in the air. So he said it. The next person in rank at that particular point was a captain. So this captain who was vintage didn't even hesitate. He looked at, a, uh, at one of those first lieutenants, shine that ball. Lieutenant didn't have a second lieutenant around, told the sergeant, get that ball shine. Sergeant told the corporal, get that ball shine. Carper told the private, get that ball shine. I mean, get it shine now. Next morning, CO walked by and the ball was shining. Now, what would have happened if you had, had folk who were so mediocre in their minds that they kept making excuses for why they couldn't get it done? Now, I will tell you up front, the CO had no idea how to get up and do that ball, but nor did he care. That wasn't his job. Captain had no idea, didn't care. First Lewis didn't care. Even the sergeant didn't care. Corporals didn't care. The private was not trying to explain how to get it done. He was too busy trying to get it done. What's your point, Pastor? Mediocre mindset is when, you, when you're unwilling to, to submit to authority. And so as a result, you make excuse after excuse. You keep projecting on other people saying what other people did and did not do, how they made me do this, how they caused me to happen. They, how this, all of that foolishness puts us in a position where we are ghetto-oriented and ghetto-bound. We will remain in a ghetto mindset as long as we refuse to accept our position as it relates to submission to authority. Ultimately, when you don't submit to authority, what you're doing is rejecting God anyway. I'll tell you another tenet of mediocre living, carelessness, carelessness. And, and, and we learn carelessness very early. Let me tell you how, one of the ways I've seen it. Perhaps you can tell me some of the ways you've seen it. You have children, one year, two year, three year old, four year old, five year old. They go in and pull all their toys out. They got them all over the floor. Hello. They're playing with these toys for about a second. They play with each one about a second, then they get up and go find something else to do. And then when they can't find anything else to do, they start to fight and, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff because that's what children do. So then when it's all said and done, you say, okay, go wash up, it's time to eat. And then you got to say it about ten times for some folk who don't have any command in your house. See, But if, you, if, you, if your children have been raised to respect your, your authority, you say it once, maybe twice, but the third time you start walking and they start running. So when they leave out of the room and go and do the wash-up, how many of you go back and see what's still left on the floor? And you say, get back in there and put those toys back in every place. Now, you just told them to come eat. But because we are so loose and we leave stuff everywhere, that becomes the norm. Because if you go to moving stuff, then they say, but... But, but, but mama, but daddy, look at the iron, and that didn't get done for two, two months. And look, look at the dishes, and the, they, they washed, but they've been stacked up. And look, look at the clothes that haven't been washed. They're still over in the corner. See, they would, they would go to point to you if they could because you're teaching them how to be mediocre. Can you hear me? Teaching mediocre living. That's ghetto programming. You, you're raising little ghetto bums, little ghetto rats. You're raising them because of your mindset. Hello, somebody. Hello. You're getting ready. You're tired. I'm just so tired. I'll take a bath in the morning. Well, the child saw that. So you get ready to tell the child, get in there and take a bath. They said, but, but, but. But you're going to want to slap them then, but you shouldn't. Now, they don't know that maybe mid, in the middle of the night you may have gotten up. They don't know that. They just know what they saw when they saw it. Y'all not listening to this, right? Uh, another tenet of this ghetto program, this mediocre lifestyle, Oh, well, let me take this carelessness one more step. Like even in the chair, in the church. A folk won't place things in their proper place. See, they'll, they'll come back. I, I'll come over and, and look, I'm talking about well-meaning people. They come out and they'll do work around the, the sanctuary, around the church grounds. Praise God for that. Thank you for that. But when it's all said and done, they walk off and go do something else. Or they're getting ready to go home. And leaving everything open. 
leaving everything out of place. I know this burns a little bit here, but you need to hear it. Everything that, that they used to do whatever they had to do, they left it and only took care of it immediately what was in their hand. That's one side. The other side is that if it wasn't something they were involved in, they say, let the other person do it. Well, when the other person is going to do something, the other person always calls a person called nobody. And nobody has owned the job because nobody <laughs> will ever do it. You don't have to worry about nobody. Nobody can be counted on. Nobody's going to always do what nobody does. Can you hear what I'm saying? So that carelessness, carelessness, taking things and, 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 and not putting them back in place, not, not putting stuff where it should be, that, that's a ghetto mindset. And no matter how much we hate to think about it, the reality is that most of us have been programmed that way, and we have to make a deliberate choice to step out of that programming. So, so I'm not railing on you. I'm not hating on you. I'm just trying to let you see that if you can see yourself, then you can also help to fix those areas that are within your control to fix. Can anybody hear this? So, so, so I don't want you to say, boy, pastor's upset. No, I'm not. I'm just as happy as a lark. An another area of mediocrity is, is insensitivity to details and insensitivity to inattention to details. You know, you do all the stuff you can see, but you don't look beneath that to see that there's some washers out of place. Okay. It's like taking your automobile to a shade tree guy who does good work, and he, get, and he got, went in, and, he, and it was a major job. So after he finished the job, you got your car, you got ready to pay for it, and he brought this, this little bucket out with a bunch of bolts, and he said, well, uh, I don't know where these go. <laughs> so <laughs> you're getting ready to have a problem. You fixed my car, but you don't know where these bolts go. <laughs> You took the boats out. That's, that's because of this programming. All they care about is the fact that it started and it'll drive off. Hello, and it might stop. We have an innocent insensitivity to function. Hello? We, we, we get caught up on function, who does what. And, and as a result of our not working close with the other person, the job never gets done. We, we have a lack of respect for leadership. We talked a little bit about that a moment ago, but I want to just drive this one point. And that is that lack of respect for leadership is something that's been programmed in us, even before the plantation. I'll give you an example. In the Garden of Eden, you had two people there and a snake. Hello. The snake talked to the one with the most influence. Guess who has the most influence in, in history and society in the cosmos? He's not the man. He might be the, be the you know, think he the stuff and all that, but he's not, he's not the one. You know, woman got the influence. Hello. She may not have the position power. She has the influence. And if you don't believe me, ask Adam. Satan had tried to get Adam to, to, to violate God's rule. Hello. God told Adam what to do and what not to do. The woman made, made just a gesture. Satan said, Eve, you ought to eat this girl. Fine as you are, you know you ought to be out here on display. And you, they got you hid back here. Look at them thighs on you, girl. Look at that. Look at how much behind you got. You need to get on out here where folk can see you. Look at you. Don't be hung up back here behind this perimeter of don't eat. Eat this stuff so you can get out here and shake your stuff. Get on out here so you can do it. So she, she said, you know, it does look good. It looked like it ought to make me smart. So she ate it. Now, that was a whole conversation. Y'all read it for yourself. I'm not making this up. I might be embellishing it, but I'm not making it up. I'm just trying to paint the picture for you today. See, if I went to talking about them in the garden and, and painting that picture, you wouldn't necessarily see it. But when you go to seeing it where you live, it starts to make a difference. So, so she, she, took, she took the fruit and ate it. So, you know, boy, this stuff does taste pretty good. You know what her next move was? Eat this. You don't read where there was any argument. He said, oh. That's influence. That's influence. And what's my point? Influence is, is neither positive or negative. It's how it's used. Can you hear what I'm saying? So that influence area is an area that we should deal with. In the home, in the, home the concept of, of function has a lot to do with roles and responsibilities. 